Man, I got a lot of things I wanted to share today, but I have to be obedient. Amen. Can't get in self. Ain't nothing like needing the Lord when you start making them promises. You ever make promises to the Lord? Mm -hmm. Look how y'all look. Mm -hmm. Things got tough. Lord, I promise you to give you a miss. <laughs> oh. We are family. Mm -hmm. When I think about family, one of the biggest conflicts in the Bible regarding family came about through two twin brothers. Two twin brothers. Jacob and Esau. And, and for as much as we embrace the concept of family and as much as we strive to be family, Some of the greatest conflicts you will ever have in your life will come from your family. Yeah, I, I see the amens on your face. I see it. And it's okay. I'm going to explain to you why that is. Some of the, I'm going to say, some of the greatest conflicts you will ever have in your life will come from your family. Why? Because those are the people that love you the most. So any conflict with them tends to have the greatest impact. Think about it. Somebody could hurt you who you don't care much for and it won't mean much to you. Somebody could lie on you who you don't think much about and it won't mean much to you. But when somebody you care about and somebody you love hurts you, it hurts you. It impacts you in a way that, that does sometimes irreparable damage to you and hopefully leads you into a place that you don't want to be. That's why as we mature, we start learning what's important is not what somebody does to you, but what? What you do to them. Because each one of us will answer to God for ourselves. So if I get focused on what Rodney's doing to me, right? without giving thought to what it's causing me to now do to him, then I get judged just like he did. Amen. Mm -hmm. You see? You see? And we know the story of Jacob and Esau, right? And it's, it's, a, it's an interesting story, but, but just, just for a summary standpoint, Jacob, Esau, was favored by his father. He was actually the older of the two boys. By law and tradition, he was supposed to inherit his father's wealth. In this day, the wealth of the father went to the oldest son. Now, now, Jacob was favored by God. And so just because somebody thinks something belongs to them doesn't always mean it does. Right? Amen. Because if God says it's yours, then it's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. So Jacob tricks his brother out of his inheritance. I'm going to show you two verses, one side of the spectrum to the other. Caleb, take us to Genesis 27, 41. I'm going to show you two sides of the spectrum. So, so Jacob tricks Esau, trick, legitimately tricks him out of his inheritance. He tricks him out of his father's blessing. And when Esau discovers what has happened, he cries. Just rugged, outdoorsy. Man's man cried. And he said to his father, don't you have another blessing? Can't you bless me anyway? And he said, I can't. I've given a blessing to your brother. And Esau said this. He hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, 
the days of mourning for my father are at hand, then I will kill my brother Jacob. Now, unlike a lot of killers we have today, they start out killing all line. Y'all missed that one. Esau meant he was going to kill his brother. That was the only revenge worthy of what Jacob had done. Because essentially, Jacob has now altered his whole life. Don't you understand something? The, 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 the trajectory of his life has now changed because of what Jacob did. Now, you can spend your life mad at somebody who you think did something to change the trajectory of your life, or you can get on living. Come on. You can hold that hatred in your heart, or you can let it go and live. All right. There's a lot of people that hurt you along the way. There's a lot of people that leave you along the way, that lie to you along the way, that you thought would ride or die and abandon you along the way. You can hold on to that, or you can move on and keep on living. Amen. So he's made a decision. I'm going to kill this creep. All right, take us to 33, 4. 33, verse 4. He says, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to mourn my father. And when I do, I'm going to kill my brother. Now, the end of the story, the end of this conflict is this. But Esau ran to meet Jacob. He embraced him, fell on his neck, and kissed him, and they cried. Now, for those of you who know the story, if you don't, and you want to read something that's fantastic, just start at Genesis 27. Amen. I don't know of anything that's as good as this. But how do we get from I'm going to kill him to running to meet him, falling on his neck, embracing him, kissing him, and then crying together? Now, for those of us who know the story, we know Jacob spent years terrified to see his brother again. Mm -hmm. And all of us are tough. <laughs> but you ever did wrong to somebody and you knew you didn't want to run into them again? Mm -hmm. As tough as you are. Mm -hmm. But you just knew. Mm -hmm. If I could have my way, I would, I would prefer to never see that person again. I almost told y'all a little story about something that happened at this church years ago. Somebody did that and put did it to the church. Mm -hmm. So I got a problem. I don't want to face it. But I'm going to face it at the church. Mm -hmm. I'll deal with it at the church. Maybe y'all can stop it. Mm -hmm. The only problem is nobody told us. Mm -hmm. Fool me once. Mm -hmm. But some things you can't run away from. Jacob went years through all sorts of things in his life, but in the back of his mind, he could not get out of the thought of, man, when I see Esau, he's going to kill me. Mm -hmm. And so Jacob grows in God, prospers in God, becomes, start transitioning into everything that God spoke over his life, but yet there was still Esau. And so what he started doing as he became wealthy and he heard about where Esau was, he started trying to see if he could buy his way out of it. Because sometimes, you know, I used to say when I first got saved, this is a true story. I used to say the biggest benefit to being saved was that I didn't have to figure everything out anymore. Because I was the type of person that always liked to figure things out. And always liked to be a step ahead. And always liked to think while other people were sleeping. And then when life started happening, some things I just couldn't get ahead of. Some things I just couldn't get in front of. And so I started trusting God. And I said, you know what? That's the coolest feeling in the world. Amen. Amen. 
Because at the end of the day, I know how it's going to turn out. I may not know what I'm going to go through, but I know where I'm going to end up. I didn't see myself three weeks ago being filleted like the doctor told my wife. Well, I could fillet him. It's like, did they teach you that in medical school? Well, I could fillet him. I never thought I'd be there, but I knew I'd be back here. I knew where I wasn't going to end. I didn't know where I was going to end up, but I knew where I wasn't going to end. You see, so Jacob starts seeing, what can I do to change the story? What can I do to appease my brother? What can I do to turn the situation around? And sometimes we get frustrated because we're throwing everything we got at a problem and we can't fix it. And the problem with some of us is we don't pray about everything. Come on, come on. We pray about certain things. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We pray about one or two things. Right. You know, the folks said something to me this morning that was that, that I thought, man, that just that just like clicked in my spirit like a like a plug in into a socket. Mm -hmm. She said, you know, going through stuff ain't really that hard. She said, standing really isn't that hard. And she looked at me and said, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at her like, yeah. <laughs> Glad I do. She said, standing really ain't that hard. Then she said, when you do what you do for God consistently, mm -hmm. when you trust God consistently, it ain't that hard to trust him when times are hard. Because that's what you usually do anyway. Amen. When Mr. Spaddy saw me in the hospital, he said, man, I feel so much better now that I'm seeing you because you pretty much still the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't lose my personality at all. Mm -hmm. I was still me. <laughs> I tried to behave best I could. I really <laughs> did. I tried to behave. Mm -hmm. I tried. I could have cut up a whole lot worse. But I tried to behave the best I could. <laughs> but the point is, there's certain things we take to God that we could see out of our control. And you got to deal with this money situation because I'm so sick and tired of being broke. Mm -hmm. I'm so tired of working and it ain't enough. I'm so tired of somebody talking about, but your credit ain't high enough. You're going to have to deal with this money situation. We'll give that to God in heart. That's about it. <laughs> the rest of it, we, we, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. And even when it comes to our family, the thing we take for granted is prayer. Mm -hmm. We say prayer changes things, mm -hmm. but we don't pray in an effort to change anything. Oh my God. Right? You shouldn't be praying for sympathy. You should be praying to change. Yes, yes. And I can tell the difference based on the tone of your prayer. When you're trying to change something, you speak like you're trying to change something. Amen. When you want somebody to feel sorry for you, then you can tell that too. But why is it then when something happens with our family, well, I don't need to pray about that. I'll deal with her. She ain't, she ain't all that anyway. <laughs> she ain't so bad. He ain't so tough. I ain't afraid of him. I can handle him. I can say some stuff to him that will cut him in half. You wish you never saw me. I give him a freeze out so strong. Crush a lot of feelings. When I get through talking about her to everybody who will pick up that phone, she wish she had never crossed me. And then we live with damaged relationships because we're trying everything we can to fix it and make it worse. The way Jacob went from being hunted and, and, and wanted to be killed by his brother to his brother running and embracing him, falling on his neck and kissing him and crying with him is because, and you know, and you know, when we get into this from a theological standpoint, we like to dig into this, right? Jacob's his, his interaction with God. But, but, but it starts with Jacob's decision to pray. Mm -hmm. And let me just say this. If there's anything in your life worth praying for, it's certainly your family. Amen. You got to pray for your family. Amen. Just because I was mad at you last week don't mean I'm mad at you today. 
And just because I was mad at you don't mean I should stay mad at you. And just because you hurt me don't mean I should carry that hurt. Maybe I should let it go and love you anyway because we're family. I'm stronger with you than I am without you. Amen. And the devil knows that. And if he knows that, at some point we got to be smart enough to know that too. So I'd rather kiss and make up because of the power we have together. So that I got somebody I can call and say, I ain't all right. I'm struggling over here. Somebody that will pray to God on my behalf rather than being separated from you because I can't get over my own feelings. And so we live with damaged relationships, relationships that could benefit us, wow. that could help us, that could bless us, that could encourage us, wow, that could just be there for us. Amen. Because we try to fix it, we're unable but we never thought to pray about it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right? That's good. Because Jacob took a two-step approach, but the first approach, this first step he took was to pray. Yes, yes. You know it. But let me show it to you. Mm -hmm. Jacob got all his money. Money don't mean nothing when somebody wants to kill you. Mm -hmm. Especially somebody who you know you can't beat. nothing but friends. I don't want no enemies. Right now. I'm getting older. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't that guy no more. I'm a little feeble. <laughs> I don't want no confrontations. All right, all right. I just want to love everybody. <laughs> well, send me to jail. <laughs> but I'm not getting injured. <laughs> Jacob's got all his money and scared to death that he's going to die. <laughs> Nothing like fighting with your family. Mm -hmm. Nothing like fighting with your family. Take us to, Caleb, take us to Genesis 32, verse 9. We're going to read 9 through 12. Then I'm going to read 24 through 29. Nothing like family fights. Family fights hurt, man. They hurt because they matter. They matter. You can get into it with somebody on your job and get into it with somebody on your job and keep getting into it with them and you just up for the challenge because they don't mean anything to you. If you get into it with your brother or sister and don't tell me it doesn't affect your life because it does. Amen. And you can act tough and you can act like you're good, but let me tell you something. When your brother ain't good, you ain't good. When your sister ain't good, you ain't good. When there's something between you, it ain't good. And you're missing something in your life. You're missing something in your life. Then Jacob said, oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your family and I will deal with you well with you. So look, man, Jacob not only prayed, that Jacob prayed, kind of like I pray. So Jacob prayed, first of all, look, he prayed in covenant. Mm -hmm. God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. The God who said to me, mm -hmm. in other words, he just quoted the word of God back to God to let God know he knows what God said. So if your prayer life don't inc include any word, oh. then you got to readjust it. Right? Because God responds to his word. his word. He doesn't respond to your need. So at some point, you just got to tell God, this is what you promised me. So this is what I must hold you accountable to by faith in Jesus. Yeah. By faith in Jesus, you got to do this because you're not a man that you should lie, nor son of man that you should repent. So if you said it, you got to bring it to pass. Yeah. But we pray it without the word. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. Lord, we do this. Lord, do you see this? Lord, we just come by here. What? <laughs> but as a person of integrity, if you say, Lord, you promised me, it changes everything. Amen. That's how Jacob prayed. Amen. He said, I'm not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which you have shown 
your servant. For I crossed over this Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two companies. I'm not worth everything you've done for me. You've been better to me than I can ask for. I'm wealthy. I've separated my wealth. And here I am. He says, deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and attack me and the mother with the children. He's being honest. Something, listen, it's okay to tell the truth. Amen. Listen, I, I, I did pretty good. That's my wife. I think I did pretty good at the hospital. I did pretty good. I, I told you I, I did real good at the hospital. I was just trying to come. I got home. I did pretty good. You know, through this whole thing, because I went from having a tube stuck in me and then trying to drain out this abscess and that not working to the doctor having to do surgery and cut me open and I had a, a hole in my stomach about this big and about this this long deep. And I went from that. And then, and, and, and then I went from that to, uh, I had a gout attack, and I couldn't use my right hand and my two feet. So then I went from, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 then I had a tube sticking out my stomach with a bag, looking like I was about 97 years old. First time I came to church, I had it. Y'all didn't even see it. My wife found a way to hide it. Then I went from this big old hand and these two bad feet, and I was, boy, I was hobbling. Then I went from a stiff neck and a bad back and moaning and groaning. And I did pretty good for the most part, but one night, I was in the kitchen with my wife, and I broke down, and I just, I said, man, this ain't how it's supposed to be. You ain't supposed to be taking care of me. I'm supposed to be taking care of you. You ain't supposed to be carrying all the heavy stuff and doing all the, and running around me. What a trooper. <laughs> and I just said, I, said, I looked at him, and I put my arms around, I said, I'm supposed to be taking care of you. But sometimes life don't go the way you plan. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I was more hurt because I was hurt or I was more hurt because I was humbled. Mm. I needed somebody to take care of me. Mm. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not. All right. I'm a doer. Mm -hmm. I'm not a sit around and wait for it to be done. And I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. And Jacob reminds me of that. And I didn't know if I was hurt because I was physically hurt or if I was hurt because I was humbled. I couldn't do, I couldn't even dress myself. I needed somebody to that degree. But sometimes you just got to be okay with saying, this is it. This is the season. This is the hand. It's okay to be honest. And if you can't be honest with your family, who are you going to be honest with? If I can't come in here and be honest with you, who am I going to be honest with? You don't keep coming here because you think I'm sitting on some, some, some cloud of perfection who, and never make mistakes. I hope you keep coming here because you know that I will be transparent with you and say, even if I fall, I will not stay down. I will get back up and we will keep on pressing toward the mark. And I love you enough to bring you with me well, no matter what we go through. Because we're family. So I'm going to be real hard going forward on these damaged relationships. Come on, bitch. I'm going to start doing some overseer calling out on some of these damaged relationships. Come on now. For some of us who are so proud mm -hmm. that we still are concerned about our feelings more than we are our family. Amen. Because at the end of the day, don't nobody care how you feel like your family. Amen. So Jacob said, listen, hey, man, I'm scared. I got everything and I've done everything and nothing's working and he's going to kill me. And Lord, I'm afraid. I need you to help. For you said I will surely treat you well and make your descendants as 
the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. Listen, if you really want God to move, you got to use the word. Amen. 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 You can cry out to God as loud as you want, as sincerely as you want. But when you cry out the word of God to God, God responds to the word. Amen. Go to 24, okay, verse 24. So, now, so first thing Jacob did is he prayed. Now, now, now. So, so, so you can pray about your family. They're worth it. If prayer changes things, and we got a problem with our family, why aren't we praying to change that? We pray for jobs. We pray for money. We pray for health and healing. But why don't we pray for family? As a matter of fact, we need each other's prayers more than anything. Amen. So we ought to be praying for each other more than anything. Amen. There should be an anticipation about driving to church just because I know I'll be around people praying for me. Amen. I'm going to be around people who love me unconditionally. Tell me when I'm wrong, but still love me. That's right. Call my... Yeah. <laughs> right? But still love me. Amen. Then Jacob was left alone, and the man wrestled him until the breaking of day. Now, when he saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint, and he wrestled, and he, as he wrestled with him, and he said, Let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, your name is no longer Jacob. Mm. Now he's speaking destiny into his life. He said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Mm -hmm. It's like, have you ever prayed, and when you finish praying, believe mm -hmm. that something happened? Yeah. Amen. Let me give you another example that you can relate to. You ever been in a fight and won and, and know you won? <laughs> you ever beat somebody up? <laughs> and walked away and know you won? Like, you know, that's a pretty cool feeling. But, but you ever prayed and when you finished, you walked away like something just happened? Like, I just made something happen here. Like, something's changed. No matter what I see, no matter what I feel, something just happened. So Jacob wrestled with this man and prevailed. Then Jacob said, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why did you bless my name? And he blessed him there. Listen, so, so here's what happens. So, so this is how we get from Esau is going to kill Jacob to Esau kissing Jacob and, 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 and falling on his neck. Because Jacob, when he got to the point that there was nothing else he could do, he prayed. And when he prayed, he engaged God. You know, sometimes you can go back and water that prayer. You know, I personally, I like to, I like to pray and keep moving. Personally, because mm -hmm. I believe I got enough faith to make it happen, and so I got to keep moving for the next things that happen. But listen, everybody ain't the same. Amen. I've been praying some re uh, redundant prayers over the last several weeks. <laughs> I ain't just been moving on. <laughs> I've been a bit turned off, like I'm being electrocuted. That's my way. <laughs> I feel so sorry for like, did you sign up for this? The doctor asked him, where did you find him? <laughs> she did. It's like everything that happened to him, nobody can explain it. And I thought it was a good thing. And she was like, where did you find him? And I was like, is she talking about me in a negative way? <laughs> I think she is. I think she is. <laughs> oh, my God. So I get it. Some prayers, you can go back and keep working. You know, if you feel like the job ain't 
finished and keep working. That's okay. Ain't a lack of faith. If the job ain't finished, keep working. But what I came to share with you today is we are worth fighting for Amen. each other. Amen. You are worth fighting for. You're worth me fighting for you. Amen. I can tell you the truth in love. You don't have to like it. You don't even have to agree with it. But as long as it's in love, as long as I don't stop loving you, So if there's some animosity, if there's something between us, let's move away from that. Let's be bigger than that. Amen. Let's decide the way that Jesus decides to love us every day in spite of what we did yesterday. Let's love each other today in spite of what you might have done yesterday. Because you're worth it. Amen. Your brothers and sisters are worth it. You're worth fighting for. This thing would have went a whole nother way. And by the way, even though Jacob stole Esau's blessing, God still blessed Esau. Mm -hmm. He still blessed him. Esau had 400 dudes with him when he rolled up on Jacob. Esau said, I don't need nothing you got. I'm good. I'm straight. I'm sorry, keep that stuff. What you sending that stuff to me for? I'm good. And God does that to everybody. If you look down the line, everybody who, who, who God promised and whose family tried to stick it, somebody else in the way, God still blessed them too. Amen. He did it to Ishmael. Uh -huh. Sarah said, I don't get that. Get that woman and her baby out of here. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have been there. And Sarah told Abraham, <laughs> you get that trick and her baby out of here. That's as nice as I can put it in church. I might go a little bit further, but it ain't going <laughs> You get her and her, because this baby is the baby of the promise, which was true. But God is so faithful and so merciful, God said, I'm still going to bless Ishmael. I'm still going to bless Ishmael. I'm not going to forget about Ishmael because it ain't his fault. And he's still part of my family. family. Got it. Got it. That's why the church is the one place where there should be no envy. Amen. We might not all get along. We might fight and, and, and get into it. But there should not be any envy in the church. There should be no jealousy and no envy. Amen. Because no matter what God has promised you, he got something different for me. And it fit me fine. 